movie star. The people who know me, really know me, are not the ones the judge and the jury want to hear from. It's as if they wanted to hear a story about some other kid. It's as if they wanted to watch a movie about some other kid. The prosecutor, with his fancy words, his hard evidence, wrote the script, directed the scene, cast just the right actor to play this kid from the hood who beat up a white kid really bad, so bad, that he can't wake up to tell the truth. Punching the Air, a story about Amal Shaheed, a 16-year-old who flourishes in art class and isn't very focused in school. He suddenly finds himself in a situation where it seemed destined to be. Convicted for murder, seeing multiple years in prison, all because of society's predetermined mold of the black boy. This book reaches deep into today's discriminatory justice system and pulls out the cold and what seems helpless perspective of a regular high schooler. African Americans are more likely than white Americans to be arrested. Once arrested, they are more likely to be convicted. And once convicted, they are more likely to experience lengthy prison sentences. African American adults are five times as likely to be incarcerated than whites. According to US Bureau of Justice Statistics, Blind Justice. His mom thinks it's justice for her son. But I know that me and him both walked down the path that was already planned for us. And we stepped onto the tipping scales of Lady Justice, with her eyes blindfolded, peeking through slits because that rag is so f***ing old, worn out, stretched thin, barely even there. Amal Shahid to the left, Jeremy and Matisse to the right, perfectly in balance. Because where I come from, jail or death were the two options she handed to us. Because where he comes from, the American dream was the one option she handed to them. So here we are, blind lady justice, I see you, too. Hi, I'm Janine and I will be analyzing blind justice and connect the poem to the criminal justice system. Blind justice highlights how the system is constantly against black youth, preventing them from having a normal childhood. We can see this in the second stanza, which talks about the systemic racism in the United States. But I know that me and him both walked down the path that was already planned for us. As we continue through the poem, the third stanza uses allusion and talks about Lady Justice. Blindfolded Lady Justice is supposed to represent a criminal justice system that judges the plaintiff and defendant fairly. The description of the blindfold, especially the words rag, old, and barely even there, implies that the blindfold or the fairness of the criminal justice system and the system itself has rarely worked properly for a long time and has never truly defended black youth. The state of the blindfold being old can mean that even though the blindfold is deteriorating, there is no action to replace or fix the blindfold, and this can suggest that no action is currently done to fix the criminal justice system. And with a deteriorated rag, Lady Justice slash the criminal justice system has never really judged people, especially people of color, fairly. The next line states, Amal Shahid to the left and Jeremy Matisse to the right. Here in this line, there is a sort of wordplay of Jeremy Matisse is in the right. This sort of implies that in society's eyes, white people are seen as the innocent victim. We carry on to, because where I come from, jail or death were the two options she handed to us. These lines connect back to the theme of systemic racism in America. For example, police brutality, hate crimes, over-policing in neighborhoods and schools, discrimination in careers and schools are some of the harsh realities that black people experience in America. As of 2001, one of every three black boys born in that year could expect to go to prison in his lifetime compared to one of every 17 white boys, according to the Sentencing Project. In these lines, we can see that black people do not experience the American dream that white people enjoy. In the next three lines, because where he comes from, the American dream was the one option she handed to them. Even though there's an emphasis on one option, the American dream allows white people to have access to more options and opportunities than black youth. Finally, the poem concludes with, so here we are, blind lady justice, I see you too. 
Lady Justice is blind with or without the blindfold, but in different ways. And this can be interpreted as when Lady Justice does have a blindfold, she judges impartially, and without the blindfold, Lady Justice slash the criminal justice system is intentional about their judgment, and despite seeing the truth right in front of them, they still judge with bias and condemn black youth. Statistics shows in 2016, Black Americans comprised 27% of all individual arrests in the United States, double their share of total population. Black youth accounted for 15% of all U.S. children, yet made up 35% of juvenile arrests in that year. A connection between race and crime is in a large part of a function of concentrated urban poverty, which is far more common for African Americans and the other racial groups. Although African Americans and Latinos comprise 29% of the U.S. population, they make up 57% of the U.S prison population. These policies have produced a dramatic rate of incarceration with a particular disproportionate impact on communities of color. In addition to range of harmful consequences to people of color, mass incarceration has been a failed policy regarding public safety outcomes. Research has documented that the effect of imprisonment on crime rates has been modest and that at the current levels, the scale of incarceration is well past the point of diminishing returns for public safety. The proliferation of racial disparities in the U.S. criminal justice system has a profound impact on the lives of people of color. Behind each statistic lies the face of a young black man or woman whose potential has been cut short by a hard sentence mandated by draconian drug law. Behind each percentage points lies the face of a Latina child who will only know her parents through hurried, awkward visits in prison visitation rooms. Behind each data set lies a community of color bereaved of hope because its young people have been locked away. Statistics show The entombment to the metal door slamming shut behind me makes my inside sink to the bottom of my feet, to the bottom of these cheap sneakers, to the cold concrete floor, to the basement of this place, to the soil, to the bedrock, to the middle of the earth. I bury myself way more than six feet deep. This cell is a tomb. I left my notebook up there. I left my pencil up there, down here in the dungeon of my mind. I write anyway. I draw anyway. The pen and pencil are my thoughts and memories. The paper is my soul. And Amani's voice echoes and bounces off the bedrock, lingers in the heat, repeating, repeating, mistakes and misgivings, mistakes and misgivings, mistakes and misgivings. I learn about the thing called the butterfly effect, not in school, but from the guys on the block. It was this one dude who said that's why we're always messing up. We're always making mistakes because ain't no butterflies in the hood. See if there were butterflies, we would have what is called the butterfly effect. A butterfly's wings can change the path of a storm. Something so small can change one big thing in the world, one big thing in the universe. If there are no butterflies here, no pretty little wings flapping in the hood, then we can't change a thing, he said. It is a metaphor, I said. Ain't nobody asked you, he said. We are the butterflies, I said, and the things we do are like wings. We do things every day, he said. How comes things ain't change? Nah. I said, everything is changing something, every day, even this conversation. I draw a vertical line on the wall with my finger. I can't see it, but it's there. To the left, I outline the word mistake. To the right, I outline the word misgivings. Mistakes. I should have stayed with Omari that night. I should have just went home that night. I should have just went on the PS4 that night. Umi should have been home that night. I should have never met Omari that night. I should have shooted my shot with Zumbia that night. I should have went with Lucas that day. I should have just walked away that second. Misgivings. Something wasn't right about those guys on the basketball courts. I felt it in my gut. So I turned back and left. Omari with his boys to deal with it. Something wasn't right about that night. The way the air felt around my body as if it was trying to warn me, trying to keep me away, but I skated all the way to the other park where I knew it was safe, where people knew my name and my face. But by the time I got there, they were leaving and skating out of that park and onto the streets like we usually do. We were home. We knew the twists and turns of every block in our hood. We knew the faces, the music, the grandmothers, calling out of the windows. We knew the kids and we knew the lines, but that night the air was just right and just wrong at the same time. 
One of them said there's this hill over on the other side. There's these steps with a handrail where we could skate and where we knew there was a line. And we didn't even know that they were following us. No, chasing us out of the parts of the town where the hood stopped being the hood and became a town. They came on bikes and skateboards and we didn't run. We stopped. I stopped and waited this time. This time I stayed and it wasn't even for anybody, for no friend, for no homie. I stayed to defend myself. Even though everything about that night, that moment was telling me what they told us to get the heck out. In my cell, I cracked, I break, I split in half, down the middle, I shatter in two pieces, and bang, 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 bang, on that door, on those four walls, at those four corners, yelling, shouting, screaming, clawing, to get the heck out, to get the heck out. The following is a poem from the book, Punching the Air, titled Pipeline. We walk one behind the other, with our hands clasped behind us, our towels rolled up in our fist. I used to line up like this in kindergarten, except with a finger on my lips, walking buddy next to me. If I turned around or spoke or stepped out of line, I got in trouble. I always got in trouble because I always had a friend in front, in back, and next to me. There was always something to say, to ask. There was always a joke to tell, to laugh at. But here and now, it's not a classroom. It's a cell block. It's not a restroom, it's open stalls and showers. It's not a lunchroom, it's a mess hall. It's not friends. It's inmates, felons, and delinquents. If I squint, I almost can't tell the difference. In conclusion, with all of our poems combined, the one message that we have been conveying is that the American judicial system was not made for us, specifically people of color, especially black people. For so long, unlike our white counterparts, the government has tried to make us feel that our rights don't deserve to be upheld and defended equally. We are always marginalized and watched at so that we can just become another story or statistic or hashtag. We made this video to bring light to the bigger issue and highlight a key form of systematic oppression within America. And although things seem that they are getting better or that they are going to get better, we truly won't progress until we see a total change within the system, primarily focusing on teachers and making sure that children are being treated fairly with kindness and respect, not just by peers, but by school administration as well. Along with re- reinforcing belief within black and brown children to let them know that their dreams are attainable. But before that, More funding needs to be diverted into low-income communities and schools, which are mainly filled with children of color. And along with this, prison systems need to be reformed. We need institutions that focus on therapy and rehabilitation rather than punishment. Americans shouldn't be leaving correctional systems worse than how they came in, only to return. As a group, We shed light on this issue, not only to get the ball rolling on this topic, but to hopefully see real change in the future. For too long, things have been the same. We need reformation and growth now. And to my black and brown children in school, I believe in you, your dreams are attainable, and you can do anything. Thank you to all those who watched.